hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you for the organizing this awesome event and inviting me for speaking here. So, <clears throat> so in this talk, I'll be sharing uh, about my experience and research in hacking games and bypassing anti cheats. So the question is why? Why would you want to do that? And to be honest, I don't know. Uh, maybe you just want to admit that uh, you suck at gaming or uh, uh, maybe you just want to have fun uh, seeing people through walls or shooting at their head without even aiming at their heads. Or maybe you just want to earn a lot of money because uh, uh, game act, uh, making cheats is a multi-million dollar industry and people are living on it. And uh, also uh, the things that you learn from game hacking uh, is uh, also the things that you learn from game hacking can also be applied in other fields like malware analysis because uh, the things that you learn like uh, internal Windows API and undocumented function can also be used in other stuff. So, so despite all these reasons, I would still uh, do not recommend you uh, to cheat in the games because it ruins the experience for others. So anyone here ever played uh, competitive games like Apex Legend, Valorant, Paladins, Fortnite? Okay. So I guess no one even used any cheats before. So I myself have been playing games for a lot of time and I was always curious like how these hackers are able to uh, hack this game. Like uh, for example, uh, this. So if you don't know what uh, this game is, uh, this is uh, Valorant and currently it has uh, one of the best anti-cheat in the market called Vanguard because it runs at the boot of Windows and uh, it keeps on running at the background 24-7 even if you are not playing games. So, uh, uh, and, uh, and it's not me, so I found this somewhere on Instagram. So how did he do it? Uh, maybe you'll find out at the end of the video. So, <clears throat> so a little bit about myself. I'm Rohan Agrawal. Uh, my handle is Nahorag, and and I have a small company in India called Defco Security, which provides penetration testing and uh, uh, continuous asset management services. I do bug bounty as well, and I've participated in Hacker One and Integrity live hacking events. And I love playing games, of course, without cheats. And so the agenda is get you all started in game hacking and uh, demonstrate some working methods uh, that still work for, uh, for bypassing the anti-cheats and encourage more research in this field because currently game hacking is what, is, is what was penetration testing or bug bounties 10 or 15 years back. So there's not many resources, on, uh, resources online. So also to encourage the anti-cheat developers to uh, make a more powerful anti-cheat. Currently, it's already powerful, but still uh, there is always room to improve. Uh, so before we start, uh, I want to clarify uh, what kind of, what this talk is not about. So usually when I talk about game hacking, people uh, uh, assume that uh, I'm finding vulnerabilities and finding vulnerabilities in anti-cheat code itself or uh, game code itself and exploiting it to uh, hack other players or hack company servers. So this talk is not about that. Uh, this talk is basically all about gaining the advantage, uh, competitive advantage over other players. Uh, so I've divided this talk into four sections. Uh, in the first one, we'll uh, quickly see the history of cheats and anti-cheats. And uh, in the next section, we're going to uh, see some basic stuff that you need to know for game hacking. And the, in the next section, we'll go uh, development for finding hooks, drivers, and in the last, I will show you a demonstration of uh, one of the popular uh, Twitch game, uh, which, uh, which I hacked uh, only for research purposes. Uh, so a little bit of history about game hacking. So the very first game was uh, made in 1957 and it was a tennis game, and, but it was not uh, publicly available because it was in a laboratory. And fun fact, the guy who made that game uh, was also responsible 
in making of first nuclear bomb so a very talented guy uh so but the video games uh, gain its popularity in 1970s and 1980s you know when uh, uh when the games were introduced for public public use and in 1980s uh, modding of uh, game started happening using command line uh, hex editor tools and uh, and the first game bot was developed in 1995 for doom 2 game uh, but the things uh started getting heated up heating up when popular games like uh, counter strike 1.6 uh started uh, uh launching in early 2000 because uh, you see when the cheating was done on single player games uh the only thing that is getting destroyed is uh the hacker that is doing the game uh, that is hacking the game and not the others player or company servers but when these multiplayer games get get launched uh, that's when uh, things went serious because uh, hackers were directly impacting other player experience and sometimes even the servers as well and since the success of online games depends on the uh, current active user base how much uh, how much game is popular so the de- the developers can let go of the small set of people ruining the experience of others so that's when in 2000 uh, came the punk buster which was the first anti cheat and in 2002 came uh, back which is valve valve anti cheat so in, initially they were very successful in stopping most of the cheaters uh, but uh, as well, as they were only user mode cheats so uh, very quickly the hackers uh, shift their cheats to the kernel level so that way they were able to bypass them so soon after that came these and uh, kernel level anti cheats uh, like easy anti cheat battle eye or vanguard and currently we are at this stage uh, we are uh, where they are mostly able to stop but not uh, not all the hackers so i'm hoping you guys know the difference between uh, user mode and kernel mode but if you still don't i'll give an example like uh, whenever you open a browser so that is opened in user mode and all the core functionalities that do that it does it happens in kernel mode like uh, like you are downloading a file and it it needs to be written to the hard disk so it needs to uh, it make the system called in the kernel for storing for getting the access to the hard drive and storing that on the uh, hard disk so the main point with respect to game hacking is that uh, a user mode process doesn't have access to the kernel mode uh, processes and memories so like if the anti cheat is in user mode so you can uh, simply uh, have you can simply make a driver in kernel mode and you, and the anti cheat will not be knowing because it's in user mode and and in the kernel mode uh, they don't have access to that so these are some of the features of kernel anti cheats uh, think of anti cheat like a classic anti debugger uh, and it has various signature detections so just like uh, antivirus have uh, signatures for viruses uh, so anti cheat also have signatures for cheats so uh, initially kernel anti cheat was a big step for the good of gaming community uh, right when it's launched 95% of the cheaters were instantly vanished from the servers and of course it can't stop 100% of the cheaters uh, because even anti cheat developers know that uh, and there will always be a dedicated or dedicated or determined ones that will always find a way uh, to hack into the game uh, so now we can move to the basics so anyone who is making a cheat uh, first has to decide whether he wants to make an internal cheat or an external so internal as the name suggests is injected directly into the uh, game memory so as it as it has direct access to the game uh, it is very much it has great performance and it is much flexible by flexibility i mean it has great functionality uh, it has great flexibility in adding the uh, new cheat functionalities and uh, internal cheats are mostly preferred for uh, games with low level or no anti cheats and external are uh, as the name suggest is have their own processes and they manipulate the memory of the game externally and 
therefore since they are external for each read and write they are making different calls so therefore their performance is low as compared to internal and the functionality that they offer is also low but it's enough for uh, doing what we want to do for like for example if you want to simply uh, do wallax or aimbot uh, you can uh, do that stuff here and external cheats are mostly preferred for games with strong anti cheats uh, because uh, strong anti cheats have uh, great detection vectors for internal in, internal hacks so that's why uh, we prefer external for uh, strong anti cheats so we will we will be focusing on external only so how do these hackers uh, bypass these uh, kernel anti cheats so as you can see here uh, we have uh, we have our cheat which is in user mode and we have our game as well and in the kernel we have uh, the anti cheat driver which is supposed to protect uh, the game's memory so as you can see we are trying to read write directly from user mode and for reading we need to have the handle for uh, we need to create the handle uh, to the game memory so what anti cheat uh, does is uh, it has a, it it uses the ob register callback and as soon as it detects the handle it completely blocks it so in order to bypass that uh, we also need to go uh, to the kernel level as well so we basically create the driver and we load it into the kernel space and we send the instruction from user mode uh, to our driver and our driver will be uh, doing us uh, doing the stuff for us for example reading writing the memory so <clears throat> what are the challenges like if you want to if you want to make your own uh, kernel level cheat uh, what are the challenges that uh, you will be facing now the first one is how you can create your driver the second one is how you can load the driver into kernel like can you is it allowed to even load any driver into the kernel and uh, how can you communicate from user mode uh, to the kernel mode for example you have uh, Uh, user mode cheat. How will you uh, send instructions to your uh, driver in the kernel? And lastly, even after doing all this, how will you make your driver undetected? Because it will be making lot of noise at the kernel level. So you need to uh, also make sure that it, it it don't get caught up with the anti cheat. So now we can move to the cheat development phase. So basically, I've divided the uh, whole cheat development cycle into five parts. uh the first one uh, which is reversing so basically uh you need to know uh what kind of cheat you are making uh, like what things you need to manipulate what things you need to read for so for that you need to reverse the game for finding those things uh, then uh you need to create the driver that will read write memory that will send uh and third is the hooking which is the communication part uh, which handles the uh, communication from user mode to kernel mode then the fourth is loading driver how will you load the driver and the fifth is the creating user mode so now we uh, we can go uh, deep into all these stuff the fir the first one is reverse engineering so usually in game hacking what we are doing is reading some address in the memory for example uh, you want uh, your health to be infinite so you need to first find the address uh address of that uh, health uh, health variable into the memory so for that uh, you need to reverse the game so usually there are two ways uh, you can do that the first one is debugging that is used usually cheat engine so maybe you have used uh, in your childhood uh, for hacking uh, games and the second one is using disassembling using ida or any other disassembler now i personally personally prefer cheat engine because uh it gets the job done easily and conveniently with ida uh, there are couple of things that you need to care, take care of first the game binary is heavily obfuscated so you need to deobfuscate it first and for doing that uh, you need to dump the binary using a kernel driver and the second thing is uh, you need to be well aware of uh, how that uh, uh, game uh, how that game is based on like is it is it based on a unity engine or is it based on a real unreal engine so you need to know the structure of that for uh, uh, for disassembling using idea so that's why 
uh, I stick it to cheat engines. So for that, uh, you don't need to worry about all those stuff. So uh, before I go into reverse engineering, I uh, first I uh, need to clarify what are the offsets as they are a very uh, uh, important point in reverse engineering. So offset by the, uh, by the name suggests is how far is something with respect to another. And why is it important? To, uh, why is it important here? So as you can see, uh, we have starting point uh, A and, and A is zero kilometer away from starting point. B is 12 kilometers. So we can say that B offset is 12 kilometer away. So why is it important in game hacking? So basically, uh, uh, the thing happens is whenever you load a game into the memory, every time it will be having a different uh, address. So like, as you can see here, uh, we have first launch. So you can see the game, ad uh, game is launched at 0x123 address. On the second launch, you can see uh, game is launched at 456 address. So let's say I want to set my health uh, to whatever I want to. So at the first launch, I have to reverse the reverse the game using whatever uh, cheat engine or disassembler. So and the and we get the address one two six. So the second time also I have to do the same thing. So instead of not uh, reverse engineering again and again, uh, what I will do is find the offset of the health from the starting point, which is the game base address. So. I know here, if you see one common thing that health is always three bytes away from the game memory. As in first launch also, it's three bytes away and second launch also three bytes away. So what I can do is uh, say is the health offset is always three bytes away. So I can always find the game memory first, which is very easy to find using Windows APIs or Windows function. So to clarify all this uh, again, so let's say we have a game we launch the game and inside we have uh, two structures only, which is enemy and player. And whenever you uh, load the game, the uh, structure and the members of it will always be uh, side to side. Like uh, you can see that ammo will always be four bytes away from player structure, but the stru player structure itself can be loaded anywhere into the memory. So, so let's say I want to uh, set my player MO to 40. So first way I can do that is I get the address of the MO. We are basically dereferencing the address uh, and then we set the uh, set it to 40. Another best way, uh, better way to do that is that since we know that MO address is four bytes away from players, player structure, so we can find the player structure address, add four bytes to it and we'll get the MO address and we can then set to 40. Even better ways to do that is to find the uh, game address. And since we know that uh, player structure is 10 bytes away from game, so we can just add uh, game address plus 10 bytes, which will give us player structure. And we can then add uh, four bytes, which will give us MO address, and we can then set to 40. And, and this is how we are, uh, we will be representing what MO offset is, which is game uh, AXC plus 10, uh, which will point to four and we can set that to MO address. Uh, so I have a quick demo for offsets, but I think since we are uh, short of time and, and uh, there are a lot more things that I need to cover here. So I'll just keep that for at the end. And if we have time, I'll, I'll play that. Uh, so this is a screenshot from, uh, from that demo, basically we uh, so we, we basically find the Paladins, which is a game protected by EAC. Uh, using Cheat Engine, we found the uh, health offset, which is a five-level deep pointer. And and this is a very simple uh, C plus plus program, which only works for games uh, that uh, don't have anti cheats. So this is just to show you that how easily uh, we can uh, using C plus plus uh, read or write the memory for the games that don't have anti-cheat. Uh, so the next uh, we can move to creating kernel driver. And for that, uh, uh, we will be needing some tools like uh, Visual Studio, uh, WDK and a debugger for debugging. And so before I overwhelm you with uh, uh, the whole cheat 
uh, i would like i would first like to uh, show you the hello world driver itself like how the driver you can make it and how uh, you can debug that so so yeah uh, so yeah so as you can see if you have ever coded in c++ uh, so you know that uh, the starting point is always void main uh, so same here uh, for uh, driver itself also the starting point is, point is uh, driver entry and you can also customize the uh, starting point in the linker setting as well just make sure whatever the uh, driver entry is here uh, the linker setting will also be, will be having that so basically what we are uh, whenever we load our driver it will first go to driver entry and uh, since the driver doesn't unload itself we need to create an object for unloading as well so that's uh, what we have done here we created the object and inside object we just simply printed that we are out of the kernel and it also has header files as well for defining these function now i can show you how uh, how it actually works how what happens in the background uh, so i have i have here a virtual box uh, running latest windows uh so this is uh, what uh, this is our hello driver and uh, and for lo uh, for loading it uh, one of the ways you can load it is uh, windows has internal way of loading using test signing mode so you need to enable test signing mode as you can see on the bottom right we have test mode open and using that you can load any driver but the thing is uh, the end if you are inside the test mode you cannot launch any game because anti cheats uh, will uh, will be uh, detecting this mode so it's just for testing uh, your drivers and uh, debugging them so first you need to for entering test mode you need to uh, set that command in command prompt bcd edit dot set and then you need to uh, reboot your system and it will be booted into test mode so the next thing is uh, you need to create is the service so i have already so i have already created the service so as you can see it already failed so to load this driver into the kernel uh, you all you have to do is uh, sc create uh, the driver name so yes we start so the driver is loaded uh, and if i can show you in the driver view So it will sh it is showing all the currently uh, driver that are loaded on the system. Uh, so yeah, this one. So as you can see, the driver is loaded and. in the debugger also i can show you the message
just make sure the capture kernel is open and now i will uh, i will now unload the driver and it, and it should uh, print the message yeah so whatever uh, the debug message we sent uh, it uh, it just printed on the kernel and we are able to see that here so the So now as we have seen uh, the driver itself, a very basic driver. Uh, the next thing which is very important here is cooking. So in order to read write the target memory uh, using our loaded driver, uh, we need a communication path uh, for that. So as you can see here, uh, we are trying to communicate to our driver which is in the kernel and we can't actually communicate through it. So hooking actually provides a path for it. and Hooking basically what does is it changes the flow of execution of a function. So how are we going to do that is uh, we will hijack a system call uh, which is already provided inside the Windows driver. You can use any Windows driver like uh, DXG kernel .sys, which is a direct test driver or Intel drivers. So they have system calls in that. So what you'll do is uh, you'll place your instruction that hey, I want to uh, I want to communicate with my driver, and here I have uh, send a, uh, set an instruction or a shell code in starting of the system call. So whenever I call that system call, uh, uh, the system call will uh, uh, transfer our instruction to the driver itself. And to understand that in detail, I have a diagram. I have a diagram here. So as you can see, we have a user mode and the kernel. We have the driver with the system call, which we are going to uh, hook to. And we have a driver as well. So you can see that uh, we are trying to communicate, but uh, we can't do that because the way we will be loading our driver, which is manual mapping, we can't do that. So in order to do that, uh, uh, we are uh, invoking a system call with our instruction, which is whatever read or write you want to do and it will go to our system call and inside system call what we have done is uh, we have added a shell code uh, which is basically doing which is basically what is doing is uh, setting the racks register to the address of our function in our driver and jumping to that so using hooking we are able to uh, uh, we are able to hook the system call which are which will be uh, sending the instruction to our driver basically we are able to communicate with the, with the driver itself. So till now, uh, what we have done is basic hello world driver. We have seen how we can communicate with the driver which is using hooking. And so what else we need to do with the driver as well? I'll show that. So the first thing it should, uh, it should have is able to get the system call address. So if I go to previous slide, we, so as you can see, we are, uh, invoking the system call. So for that, we need to get the address of that first. Help. So it should be able to get that address. Uh, and uh, the second part is hooking. Uh, it should be able to place our the shell code into the system call. And the third is uh, hook handler itself. Uh, for So basically, whatever the instruction we are sending to our driver, it should be handle, it should be able to handle whether it's read or write. And the fourth one is clearing the traces. So whenever we load a driver, it creates a lot of noise. And there are some uh, tables inside which uh, these things get logged. So you, you need to also clear those things. Uh, so I can uh, just go over uh, the driver itself, the code of the driver itself. So just like I showed you in the uh, Hello World driver, we have here a driver entry and we have a, a kernel function. Uh, so we can. So just to give you overview, 
this is the part uh, where uh, we are we are where we are getting the system call address so in this uh, we are targeting the system call uh, which is nt open composition which is very big and uh, this system call is inside the dxg kernel dot sys so we are targeting that and and here we are placing uh, our shell code into that thing so that it so, it, so that it can transfer our uh, instructions and and this is the hook handler uh, which will be handling all the instruction that we are sending whether it's read or write so there are a lot more stuff going on and uh, i can't like explain all this stuff uh, you need to most of them are undocumented undocumented functions so you need to uh, explore it on your own and see what what is going on at the end maybe just google these function and you'll get to know what is happening and uh, and i can show you uh, uh, what is happening at the back end Uh, so I already have here the driver itself, and uh, let me open a debugger. We need to do the kernel debug local. So now I'll here just uh, reload the driver, which is which is having our system call. And now if we, uh, we should be able to uh, disassemble uh, this driver. And to show you uh, the system call in this, so this is a system call. So as you can see, we got the system call, and if you will see the first few instruction that there is no uh, move racks, or whatever the shell code which will we be which we will be placing. So now I'll just uh, load the driver, and you can see our uh, shell code which will be placed inside here. Oh, I forgot to uh, put the mapper in here. Anyway, so whenever we will be loading this driver, so what you'll see is uh, the the shell code which 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 I was talking before, the move rack, jump racks. It will uh, it will be pushed on the very first instruction uh, of the system call. So whenever I will be invoking that, it will be jumping uh, to our hook handler, which will be handling all the instruction. Uh, so we have seen the driver itself. Uh, then uh, the next uh, the next slide is uh, very important as it as it can make or break your uh, cheat itself. 
So what are the detection vectors while you are using this hook? So the very first thing is the hook, it's, uh, the hook function itself. The system call that I was talking about, uh, that is very widely known by the anti-cheat. So if you use that, uh, you will in instantly uh, get detected. Uh, so you need to find your own system call. It can be inside that DXG kernel or or you can find your own uh, driver, uh, or you can find the own, your own driver uh, in which you can find the, your own system call. And the second thing that you need to take care of is the shell code itself. The, uh, the assembly code that you are pushing inside the uh, system call move racks, jump racks. So this is also very, uh, the anti-cheat have made signature of. So you need to uh, create your own shell code, which will be doing the same stuff as what this is doing. The one that I'm using has 11 line of assembly and the hook function that I'm using is totally in different driver. So as you can see, this is a screenshot of the driver itself. So the, this hook function, you need to change the anti open and the shell code which you have, we are placing, you need to change those in order to get, in order to be undetected. Now I can't tell you uh, like uh, what you should do because as soon as I do that, uh, the, the everyone is watching this. So as soon as, as I do that, the anti-cheat company will uh, make signature for it. Or if you use it or many people use it, uh, they will get to know about it and uh, they can easily make signature and it will get banned. So the next thing is how will you load the driver? You have created your driver, you have, you got the hook. Uh, the next question is how you can load it. So one thing, one way I showed you was the test signing mode. But the thing that in that is, uh, it doesn't work with modern anti-cheats. So you can't uh, like, uh, so you using that you can't load your uh, driver. The next thing is you can pay money to Microsoft uh, to get your driver signed by them, which will give you the certificate for that. Um, but the thing is you have to pay it and it can be easily revoked by them if it, if it gets reported or if it gets detected. So the next thing, uh, the next best way you can do is exploit. So basically you exploit the, op the officially signed driver itself. For example, uh, this is a tool called KD Mapper. Uh, what it does is it, uh, there is a vulnerability inside a Intel driver, which is IQ, IQ, VW, and it exploits the vulnerability in it to manually map our driver into the kernel memory. What I mean by manually mapping is it uh, allocates some memory and it just throws our driver into that memory. So, uh, so that way, uh, using some vulnerable driver, uh, which are officially signed, you can load your uh, unsigned driver into the kernel memory. And to do that, you all, all you need to do is KD mapper the driver itself. Uh, and one thing which is also beneficial for you of using this KD mapper is that uh, it will automatically clear, clear most of the traces. Like the most major traces are MM unload driver, PitB cache, and G kernel. So these are all get, uh, get tracked inside the kernel when you load your driver, when you hook it. So uh, this tool automatically clears those, but it doesn't clear everything. So uh, you need to reverse the anti-cheat itself and see what kind of uh, buckets or logs they are checking inside the kernel itself. Yeah, uh, this is one of the easiest steps for creating the user mode. All you uh, all you need to do is uh, you need to be able to call your hook function and you need to be able to uh, prepare those instruction. Like if you are sending read, you need to be able to uh, prepare those instruction. And if you are sending write, you need to be able to do that. But it gets complex when you do other stuff like AMBOT or ESP because uh, that requires uh, doing calculation, technometry stuff. So in those cases, uh, making the user mode, it gets complex. But usually for other stuff like uh, uh, reading memory, uh, it's uh, it's very easy for creating the user mode. So now I can quickly just show you uh, uh, the hack that I made uh, for a very popular game.
So the game is Apex Legends, and maybe you have played it or not, but it's uh, just below the Valorant, uh, Valorant in terms of Twitch streaming. So I've just fast forward it, just create uh, it, it's just finding the match. And what I've done in this cheat is uh, I've added the added the glow on enemies itself. So I'll be able to uh, see them through the walls. And I've also added the items glow as well. So you can see the uh, items that you, that for example, you need to uh, loot a specific kind of gun like sniper. So you can th see through walls where that gun is. So, uh, This I've recorded just two, three days back. So uh, this is the user mode. I've already loaded uh, the kernel driver into the kernel. I've just I've just run the user mode. So as you can see, I'm able to see people through walls. And if I if I'll go any closer, I'll also be able to see the uh, see the loot. So as you can see, the blue ones. Are the I've already highlighted a certain kind of weapons which I can see through also that I can uh, loot them. So this is the bonus stuff. So uh, the problem with the stuff which I showed you earlier is. Uh, that thing works for most of the game here, but there is one exception which is uh, Valorant. Uh, it has uh, it has a very powerful anti cheat, and the the things that is uh, not working with what I was uh, showing you earlier is that uh, the way we were loading the driver, we are not able to use, do that here because in that case we were loading the driver in the user mode, and uh, whenever we start the game at that point anti cheat runs. But in case of Valorant, the anti-cheat runs start uh, starting from the boot itself. So we need to find a way to load the driver uh, before uh, we can even start the system. So one of the ways we can do that is, uh, is uh, using the BIOS. So in BIOS, generally, we can't uh, load the driver, but we can use an alternate way uh, is by using UE UEFI. So it's like a modern BIOS. So you put the driver of UEFI and your driver inside the USB, and you uh, you plug the USB into your system, and then you reboot. And just like when you install uh, Windows using USB, uh, it will first it will go, it will launch the BIOS, and in the BIOS uh, you will you will find the UEFI loader, and in that you can load your driver, and uh, that way you can uh, load your driver without uh, before the window starts. The other hacks which are uh, relevant for uh, Valorant is uh, external hardware hacks. So, so there were many, uh, many uh, recently, uh, many people were making pixel, pixel bot for uh, Valorant. So as you can see the enemy here, uh, it has, it is highlighted with a red color. So they have made a Python script uh, which uh, simply uh, you know, find these pixel on the screen and aims at that pixel. So initially, uh, they were working the Python scripts, but uh, they were easily getting detected. So next thing they did is they used uh, Arduino for doing that. So whatever uh, the mouse event, for example, clicking and all, it was handling by the Arduino itself. Again, uh, and using hypervisor, uh, it was able to simulate uh, a secondary mouse. So again, this was in August, it, it got patched by Valorant, the hypervisor. And the next thing the now hackers what are doing is uh, they are using USB host shield on the top of the Arduino. So now you can just simply plug your uh, mouse to the Arduino and the, your Arduino you can plug to the computer. So it's like having aimbot inside your mouse itself. So I don't know how they will detect it or they will patch it, but let's see. So uh, here I will be uh, share, uh, sharing the driver, the code for the user mode and kernel board uh, by the end of the day. And uh, 
these are some of the references uh, which helped in making of uh, this slide these uh, this presentation uh, the guided hacking uh, this is a paid this is a paid uh, website uh, which post which has a great community and it costs around twenty dollar for a year, so it's cheap. So you, so it's like a go-to for game hacking. Uh, you can find a lot of tutorials and stuff. Uh, the second one is unknown cheats. Uh, it's a game hacking form, and the information there is scattered. So you need to research whatever you want to find. You will get there, but you need to research on it. And the the third one is uh, this guy Null. Uh, he posts uh, videos about making kernel cheats. So that's it. Uh, thank you, everyone. I hope you liked it.